Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today we're doing something a little different, starting a new, hopefully long-term series. We are going to be building in Minecraft. But we aren't just building, we're going to be building archaeological sites in Minecraft. And of course, there wouldn't be much point of watching me build cool archaeological sites in Minecraft if I didn't tell you why they're cool. So here we go. An archaeologist builds cool archaeological sites in Minecraft while telling you why those sites are cool and why they're also archaeologically important. Here we go. So, starting off, I didn't want to start with something that everyone knows a lot about, like the Colosseum or the Pyramids at Giza or something, but I did want to start with a site that a lot of people have at least heard of, so I decided to go with Chichen Itza. Now, Chichen Itza is a big site, and there's a lot there, so we have to narrow it down a little. Today we're building the Temple of Kukulkan at Chichen Itza. Let's start with where Chichen Itza is to get you oriented. Chichen Itza is a large pre-Columbian city built by the Maya between the 7th and roughly 11th centuries AD. The Maya are a group of people who live in the Yucatan Peninsula, which is southern Mexico, Guatemala, Belize, El Salvador, and Honduras. There are absolutely still Maya living there today, and they are all generally descendants of the ancient Maya civilization in this region, which is really cool. Chichen Itza is in southern Mexico and was one of the largest Maya cities to have been built like ever. So you can understand why we're focusing on the temple to Kukulkan instead of the entire site. Now because this temple is located in southern Mexico, I decided to go with a savanna biome in Minecraft just to make it a bit closer, at least in how it looks, to southern Mexico. Southern Mexico isn't a savanna, it's in a jungle, but it can be really dry at times. I didn't feel like a jungle biome would capture the right grass color, and that's the main thing I can't change. I can always plant jungle trees and such around to make it feel closer to the Yucatan. I can't change the grass color, so I went in search of a savanna biome. Now the other thing is that this site is in a relatively flat area of the Yucatan, and you can see that the savanna biome I found is not that flat, so I edited it a bit with some fancy mods world editor. It's, it's fine, it's all fine. But yeah, so it's flattened out a bit, it's all great. Now, the temple of Kukulkan. This temple is also called El Castillo in Spanish. It is a huge step pyramid at the center of Chichen Itza, and it's dedicated to, you guessed it, Kukulkan. Now, Kukulkan is a feathered or plumed serpent deity worshipped by the Maya, at least in ancient times, but it seems that the tradition is still alive as well. There are some similarities between Kukulkan and other deities of this region, like Quetzalcoatl in Aztec mythology, but they're not the same deity. Interestingly, we know relatively little about about Kukulkan, at least from what I could find, in part because historical documents get a little bit confused between references to the deity and references to an impressive ruler in the region who had the same name. It seems like over time the line between the two has become a little bit blurred, but on the other hand, maybe it was always a little bit blurred. We don't really know. At the very least, there are depictions from Chichen Itza suggesting Kukulkan presided over sacrifice rituals, the deity at least but that's about all I could find. If you happen to know more about Kukulkan, or you are Maya and you would like to share, please feel free to do so in the comments. If you aren't Maya and you know more about Kukulkan, make sure that those who are Maya are comfortable with that being shared. We want to make sure that the information we're sharing is something that people from groups that are guardians of that knowledge are comfortable with being shared. Okay, so this pyramid, as you can see, it's big. It's really big. It's actually bigger than the photo makes it seem because there are actually two more pyramids underneath the first one. These two pyramids were built earlier, almost like they built a smaller pyramid and then a little while later they built a medium one on top of it, like over it, and then they built this large one on top of that. So it's three pyramids inside of each other. What's cool about this discovery, which was only made recently, like it was published in 2018, what's cool about it, aside from the fact that there are three pyramids in one, which is cool by itself, is that this is also the first time anyone has used this particular technique called ERT in this way in archaeology at all. So it's big news for the site and for Maya archaeology, but it's also big news for archaeology as a whole, which is really, really cool. Now the difficulty in building this site in Minecraft is that the scale is going to be a bit difficult. We also don't have a clear picture of what the oldest pyramid looks like, because it's only been measured using machines, we haven't actually dug it out, and the middle pyramid 
runs into some scaling issues because it's about two-thirds as big as the larger pyramid, but Minecraft doesn't do two-thirds size blocks, and it doesn't have ways of building easily at that scale. I actually did try to build the second pyramid inside this one, but the scale didn't work. We're just going to go with the latest visible pyramid to Kukulkan at Chichen Itza today. Let's start with the base of the pyramid, as, as you can already see, but let me tell you a little bit about the base of the pyramid. This pyramid is 55.3 meters, or 181 feet across in real life, and we can assume that a block in Minecraft is about a meter, just to make things easy for scale. 55.3 isn't really something we can do in Minecraft, so I just rounded it down to 50 for ease. Now, the pyramid is built out of limestone, but that doesn't exist in vanilla Minecraft, and I'd like to do these in vanilla Minecraft so that you all can build them yourselves if you want to without having to download a bunch of mods. So I went with diorite because the color is closest to limestone. If I had limestone, I would have used it, but we're going with diorite here. Basically, the only materials I use are polished diorite blocks, diorite walls, polished diorite stairs, and polished diorite slabs, and then a couple torches. That's literally it. We can see from this plan that the staircases are roughly 10 meters across, so that's 10 stair blocks. The edges on either side of the staircase are about 20 meters, so that's 20 blocks on either side. We can also see that the stairs end about 4 or 5 meters from the base of the pyramid. The pyramid by itself is 24 meters high, with another 6 meters for the temple at the top, and by then the stairs need to be in line with the pyramid edges. We also need to work out a way to make the decorations on the pyramid edges get smaller as they reach the top, but still have the same number on each level. So lots of math. Luckily for all of you, I worked this out in a test world already, so you can just watch me build instead of watching me figure out all the math and failing for a very long time. This was very complicated. Anyway, <laughs> moving on. So let's talk a little about the history of archaeology at this site. The Spanish first found out about it in 1566, when Friar Diego de Landa gave a brief description of the site in a piece that he wrote. Another more detailed description was written by John Lloyd Stevens in 1843, and then lithographs and photographs were published between the 1860s and early 1900s that show the temple largely covered in vegetation. In 1924, the Carnegie Institute for Science in Washington, D.C. asked the Mexican government for permission to carry out exploration and restoration efforts at Chichen Itza, and work began in 1927. In April of 1931, archaeologists began excavating the middle pyramid, because until then it was only speculation that anything was underneath the pyramid that we can see today. By 1935 they had found what is now called the North Chamber or Hall of Offerings, which has a Chuck Mool statue with nails, teeth, and eyes made of mother of pearl. After about a year of further excavations, they found another chamber very near the first that contains two parallel rows of human bone along the back wall and a red jaguar statue shaped like a throne. They concluded that there was a smaller pyramid with a temple at the top that the current visible temple was built on top of, and that the inner pyramid likely had nine steps to it, similar to the outer one that led up to the two chambers with the statues. So this was the first we really understood of there being anything underneath the pyramid, and it wasn't really a popular thought at the time. The reason they excavated was because they wanted to confirm, but many archaeologists at the time thought that it was a ridiculous idea. Instead, there is actually a pyramid, but not just one, two pyramids underneath Kukulkan at Chichen Itza. So we discover that there's a second pyramid in 1931, but it's not until 2018 that a third pyramid is discovered. So you can see there's a big gap between that knowledge, and the reason for that is because further excavations weren't really carried out in that way, and it can be difficult to dig through two separate pyramids to get to a third one, so you can understand why we might not have excavated. And the technology for finding a pyramid without digging it has only very recently been developed. Really, it was an experiment carried out by this team that they were able to find this third pyramid. So that's just to let you know, things are still happening in archaeology that still lead to new discoveries on sites, even if we've known about those sites or been doing work there archaeologically for roughly a century. As for the statues, the red jaguar statue was painted with a red pigment that includes cinnabar, which is a mineral that's not easily available anywhere around Chichen Itza. The fangs of the jaguar are also made with milk conch shells, which is a type of mollusk that is also not easily available around Chichen Itza. Finally, the green stones that you can see on the jaguar, those are made of jadeite, which is yet another material that isn't available locally. So all three of these materials being present on a single statue probably means two things. 
One, Chichen Itza was connected to long distance trade routes that would let them get these materials in the first place, which isn't too surprising since it's the biggest city known for this culture at this time, so it makes sense that they would have long distance trade routes. And two, this particular statue, having all of these rare materials on it, probably had a lot of meaning, especially because it's in the middle of a temple, in the middle of a pyramid that's been built on top of and that was built on top of something else. Interestingly, there is also some evidence that red symbolizes both the creation of life and death and sacrifice to the Maya, which suggests that perhaps this statue was used in the ritual closing of the middle pyramid before the final visible pyramid was built. That might seem a little odd, but ritually closing sacred sites is a common practice across the world, and it's common at Maya sites both for sacred places and for more everyday buildings like houses and such. The other interesting connection with the jaguar statue slash throne is that it appears similar to thrones in Maya murals, and their use in those murals might indicate that whoever sat on the throne would have access to the axis mundi, or the place where the earth connects to the sacred planes. Connected to that symbolism is the fact that the pyramid itself, or all three of them really, are positioned at the intersection of four cenotes, or sinkholes that have been filled with water underground. So imagine these big caves underground filled with water, four of them where they intersect, this pyramid was built on top of it. The fact that the temple is centered at that intersection indicates that the Maya knew those cenotes were there and they intentionally built the temple at that intersection. So there's potentially symbolism there as well connected to the Axis Mundi. Now, at this point, you may be wondering when this temple was built. And if you happen to remember back to the beginning, I said it was built between the 7th to 11th ish centuries AD. But we have three different pyramids, so when was each of them built? Well, the team who discovered the evidence of the earliest pyramid think that it was likely built between the 7th and 8th centuries AD. The middle pyramid is believed to have been built around the 9th century AD, but the dates are a little rough, and the last pyramid is generally thought to have been built around the 10th century AD, but I have also seen sources note the 11th or 12th centuries. Something you might be wondering is why we don't know which century any of these were necessarily built in, since we have things like radiocarbon dating in archaeology. There are a few reasons why we might not know when these are built. First, the innermost pyramid hasn't actually been excavated, or if it has, the results haven't been published. After all, it was only found and confirmed in 2018, and you know how things have been recently, it's not like archaeological excavations have been going ahead in most places. So we might get more solid dates for that in the future, but we aren't there yet. The middle pyramid has been excavated, so you might think we could date it a bit better, but radiocarbon dating was developed in the late 1940s and only became common on archaeological sites several decades later. So the excavations in the early to mid 1930s couldn't have known it would be possible. If they happened to find any carbon samples that we could have used for radiocarbon dating, they probably didn't know how to keep them uncontaminated or even to keep them at all necessarily. But what about more recent excavations, I hear you asking? Can't they just excavate again? Uh, yes and no. You can never excavate the same place twice in archaeology because once you've dug that area, it's it's been dug, it's been disturbed. You can't dig it again. Sites that get excavated over many years or even many decades often excavate only certain areas or only certain parts of certain areas in order to preserve the rest of the site in the ground. Pompeii is a great example of this because it's such a rare kind of site. Archaeologists have been very careful not to excavate all of Pompeii all at once for decades because we we know that new technologies will develop in the future and we will want to be able to use them at least on a portion of the site if we can. So we're dragging out the excavation at Pompeii, in part because there's so much there, but also in part because we want to make sure that any new technologies that get developed are something that we can actually use to look at Pompeii. Added to that is the fact that the Temple of Kukulkan certainly was a sacred site for the Maya and may still be, and excavating there would require a lot of negotiation between whoever wanted to excavate the Mexican government who control legal access to the site, and the Maya, for whom elements of the site may still be sacred and deserving of respect. Good archaeologists don't excavate somewhere without the support of the government that owns the land and the communities that are culturally connected to the site. So that's another reason why we might not have excavated here. And on top of that, radiocarbon dating requires carbon, you know? Because it's radiocarbon dating. So you need organic materials, so things that used to be living, that haven't been contaminated, 
completed and that you know date to roughly the time the site was being built. A bit of burned charcoal from right underneath one of the temple stairs would be excellent, but it's rarely something that archaeologists find. Usually we might find some charcoal a little further down in the layers or a little further up, which tells us that the building was built either after or before a certain date, but not much more. And finally, and this is another complication that is very frustrating to anyone who works in the first millennium BC or the first millennium AD. Radiocarbon dating works by understanding changes in the amount of carbon in the Earth's atmosphere at different times, but it doesn't change at a steady rate. Sometimes it can change drastically over a really short period of time, and sometimes it doesn't change much for long stretches of time. This can lead to something we call a plateau in radiocarbon dating, which is when the levels of carbon in the atmosphere atmosphere stayed roughly the same for a long time. A really well-known plateau is the Hallstatt Plateau, which lasted from 800 BC to 400 BC, which is basically the Iron Age in Europe. Basically, any samples from that period always come back with dates of 800 BC to 400 BC, and it can be very complicated, if not impossible, to try to narrow that down further, and in many cases we can't. That's a really big plateau, but smaller plateaus definitely happen, and radiocarbon dating often can't match more precise than about a 50-year range anyway, if you're lucky. It's possible that any radiocarbon dates for the latest pyramid may fall into a range of 1 to 200 years that span the 10th to 12th centuries. All that said about radiocarbon dating, I also didn't find much evidence that any had been done for the Temple of Kukulkan, which suggests to me that perhaps it can't be done, either due to a lack of samples or a lack of permission to take samples. So what that means is that in terms of dating these pyramids, we're going off of things like art styles, or association with the buildings around it, or the artifacts that we find inside. When we compare those to similar things found at other sites, like I said with the jaguar mimicking certain art styles on Maya murals, if we know the rough dates for the murals, then we can guess that the rough date for the statue is maybe relatively the same. Right, back to the pyramid. <laughs> because it's been a while. The top of the pyramid was a bit difficult to make because the only depictions I could find were a general plan of the walls and the outside photos taken from ground level. I don't know if anything is inside the temple, but nothing I read ever said there was, so I'm assuming it's empty. I did decide to put some torches in the northern entrance to get a cool lighting effect at night, but I don't know if there would have been any light in the temple historically. If you've been to this temple, or if you happen to know more about it, let me know what's inside in the comments below because I, I couldn't find anything. Also, even though I'm not talking much about the math of building this in Minecraft, this pyramid is all about numbers. Each side of the pyramid has 91 steps, as in stairs, right? Each side has nine steps of the step pyramid, but it has 91 stairs, which is a total of 364. There is also a top step to the temple that is shared by all sides, which makes the total 365. You'll notice that this is the same number as days in a year, and it also happens to be the same number in the Maya Hob calendar, which has 18 months of 20 days each, and then five nameless or unlucky days at the end. The Hob is only one part of the Maya calendar system, but it is important because it was the calendar that closely marked the path of the sun, and is often called the solar calendar. Also, if I'm mispronouncing that, I apologize terribly, please let me know how to pronounce it in the comments. Speaking of the sun, you've probably heard that on the spring and autumn equinoxes, the late afternoon sun casts a certain pattern of shadow that makes it look as though the serpents on the north staircase are crawling down the pyramid. This is true! Some archaeologists are unsure if the Maya meant for it to happen at the equinox because you can see the same pattern for a few weeks on either side of the equinoxes, but it's important to remember that just because it occurs more than once around the equinoxes doesn't mean the Maya didn't build it like that on purpose, right? Maybe they wanted it to happen more than once around the equinoxes. So let's stop talking about how cool the lighting is and let me actually show you. Isn't that so cool? You want to know what's also cool? Light isn't the only cool thing this staircase does. It also makes cool noises. If you stand in front of the staircase and clap, the echo sounds like the chirping noise of a quetzal bird, which is the feathered part of the feathered serpent Kukulkan. Here, just listen to how cool this is. <laughs> Thank you.
Isn't that great? So if you have the chance, once it's safe, to see Chichen Itza in the Temple of Kukulkan in person, I highly recommend you go. Unfortunately, you won't be able to climb up it or go into any of the chambers anymore for safety reasons, but it's definitely still worth seeing. It's been on my list of things to one day see since I was like eight or nine, so you should go if you can, once it's safe. And there you go! That was the Temple of Kukulkan at Chichen Itza. If you enjoyed the video, please feel free to like, comment, and subscribe down below, and hit the notification bell so you can be among the first to know about any new videos I post. Also, what site would you like to see me build next? Leave a comment down below and we'll have a look! Thank you all for tuning in, and I hope you have a great rest of your day! Bye!